Okay. Um, beginning with uh, insights. Um, the capacity to discern the true nature of a situation. We're talking about the ability of stencils to print paste. And go to the next one. I had the picture of the, the nice little one that was in the brochure, but when I got up this morning, it uh, wasn't in my spreadsheet. Oh, it looks like it is there behind, huh? So I had to make a new one. <laughs> um, can anyone tell me what uh, the definition of, you know, is paste printing? What is it? What is, it's 25% of the defects according to that particular survey. So what's, the, is it only the stencil? No. You agree with that? You sure? All right, Norm. I followed along the, the lines of this program. The input dictates the uh, input. Your process and output really de determines whether or not the stencil is going to work or not. Um, Go to the next one. <laughs> All right, here's your inputs. According to, this is uh, uh, based on a, a presentation that I read about in the internet. We always use that. These are the inputs in printing process. Now, how many process engineers are here? Any design engineers? Design engineer. Okay, so. As a process engineer, you have uh, control of ordering your stencil, where you're going to order, what kind of stencil you're going to order. Um, squeegee, everyone uses metal blades now, right? Your stencil printer is an input. Um, do you have control of your stencil printer in which you you've, have company standards of your snap off, your stencil, the squeegee speed and all of that? Most people they don't like that. Your solder paste, can your customer dictate your solder paste? Or do you get a choice yourself? You get a choice? And the substrate, how many, how many people control where you get your substrate? Usually the customer is going to give you the board, right? He's going to tell you, this is the board, and this is what I want you to build. And then your space is your environment. What, uh, the environment here in, in Chicago is a lot different than in California or in Florida or Texas. Uh, so how much of the environment do you control? Do, does your company control the relative humidity, the temperature, why not? These, can this affect the stencil printing? What is the answer? What I can deal with and talk about is not those things, but I can talk about the stencil. And these are the factors in whether or not a stencil is a good stencil or not. Your flatness really is, a, is de determined by the metal you use and also how you put the holes in the metal. You, there's a number of different methods of putting holes and making stencils. Uh, and especially with laser cut stencils, if you do not have your, uh, your uh, laser cutter adjusted correctly, you can affect the flatness of the stencil. The thickness is determined by uh, the metal you buy or the metal you grow. Fabrication methods. You can order an electroform stencil. You can order a laser cut stencil. You can order a chemical etch stencil. You all familiar with those? The finish type is really two different types. They have now a, uh, the original one was electro polish. An electro polish finish was actually used back in the chem etch days when we used to chemically etch all of our stencils. And the electro polish was used to smooth the interior walls because the walls would be, you would chemically etched from the top and the bottom at the same time and the center point where they broke through would be a this shape and so electro polishing was used to smooth it out. Um, 
<clears throat> we uh, then, when, in 1980, 1992, when laser technology actually became uh, available for non-military uses, we had uh, stencils cut with a CO2 laser. And the CO2 laser had an 8 mil beam and uh, XY table that moved, uh, created very, what we could call a moon crater type aperture walls. And electro polishing was a way to smooth those, those walls, those jaggedness. The other areas of uh, stencil we're actually going to talk about. Uh, your wall area, your wall shape, your aperture tolerances, all this. You, with a stencil, I mean, your idea is, is really to get paste to release onto the board, as Bob was saying earlier. Um, if you can get paste to release onto the board, and if you can get the paste to release on the pad, then printing and stencils are easy enough to do. But that's not always the case. Um, I was earlier I was going to describe a situation where we had a customer that had a board that was 24 inches, 24 and a half inches long, 22 inches wide, and 64 layers thick. And in the middle of this board he had a bunch of BGAs and all along the outside he had his QFP components. So he ordered the stencil for me and he calls me up and he says, hey Mike, the stencil, I, I printed on the board, and it doesn't register to the pads. I said, what? He says, there's something wrong with your laser. Can you check? Well, you go to the laser, the one that we have. If it's off half a mil, you get an error, and the system stops. So I checked the log. There's no error message. So I had him bring by the uh, board, and we overlaid the stencil. Sure enough, it, it, it's misregistered on the far edges. Talk a little bit about, in order to get a good stencil, you have to give good input. We're talking about inputs again, and all I have is stencils. As process engineers, you get a whole packet of Gerber. You've got fab drawings, assembly drawings, and when you order the stencil, not you guys, because you're here at a symposium learning stuff, but the norm, people just throw it at the stencil house and say, make me a stencil. And if you're using a house that's been around for a while, then maybe we can make something that'll work. Uh, as engineers, as process engineers, and people who are actually in control of the inputs, it really behooves you to make some decisions yourself. I don't know if you use, uh, uh, you should establish an order form that is unique to you. I mean.